Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. What if I told you that I could reduce your data model size significantly with one checkbox? Hmm, let's find out how. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, Adam, what are you talking about here? This was an actual customer engagement that we had. Patrick was part of this as well. And it all started, they said that they wanted to upgrade to a P4 SKU within Power BI Premium. And typically when folks ask that, I'm like, eh, you probably don't need a P4. They said that this was because their model size wouldn't fit in a P3. So with all things, we look to optimize. So I wanted to see what their model looked like. To do that, I asked for the VPACs v, v file, which is the VertiPack analyzer information that you can get from DAX Studio. All right, enough of all this talking. Let me show you what this is actually like. To do that, let's head over to my machine. All right, I'm in DAX Studio. They ended up giving me that VPACs file. So I am going to go to advanced and then I'm going to say import metrics. So there's the VPACs file. Let's go ahead and open that up. And the minute I did this, Patrick looked at me and said, oh, we're done. Huh? We're done. That was quick. All right. Look at this. We've got multiple local date tables that are right up on, on the size. I'm sorting this by column size. So you'll see the COL size. That is what we're sorting on. That's typically what I want to look at first is what's the largest thing that is consuming my model size. And that's what I'm going to go after. And if we look at these, you'll see that it's like 208 meg. This is in bytes, right? So 208 meg on that first local day table. That's insane. And then you'll see uh, the percent DB. You'll see that that's the actual size that it's taking up. I mock this up a little bit in their, in the customer's case, when we looked at this, they had four of these local date tables and each one was taking a little over 15%. And so I said, look, for these four, we can knock this out right away and reclaim up to 60 to 70% of your model size. That's insane. And as Patrick said, we're done. But we wanted to dig into this a little more and figure out what exactly is going on. Let me explain further. So just looking at this VPAX file, you'll see the cardinality here. This is a local date table. The local date table gets generated from the auto date time capability inside of Power BI Desktop. We'll come back to that. This item here, if we see 2.9 million or 3.6 million, the cardinality, those are the individual items. And we're like, there's no way. Like if you have like 1970 to 2020, like it's not going to be that many dates inside of it. So how do you get, this was the question we wanted to solve. How do you get to 2.9 million or 3.6 million cardinality in a date range, individual dates? You have to go back. So we asked, so we were looking at this 2.9 million. If you expand that, if we look at year, there's 8,000 years inside of that. Look at that. That's, that's bananas. 8,000 years. How do you get 8,000 years? And then it dawned on us. We're like, oh, okay. So the local day table is a calculated table and gets generated by using the min and the max of that given column that it's going after. So our first thought was maybe it's a slowly changing dimension or maybe it is, uh, you know, maybe it's just a dimension that they have where their date is just way out there to signify that maybe it hasn't closed yet or something of that nature. So let me go to an actual file. Let me go to the actual Power BI desktop file where I've got this implemented. We'll see this internet sales two table. And if I look there, we've just got a bunch of date fields here and I've, I've mocked some of this up. The other, uh, the other thing I've done as well is my sales territory table. I added a date field on this as well to illustrate. That's the active date. If we go look at our data. Let's go over to the sales territory table because it's easier to see. And you'll see the one item here that says Friday, January 1st, 9,999. In the customer's case, they had that in their actual dimension. They even said, yeah, we've got some rows in there that we know that we've we've hit that with. So this brings us back to the auto date time. Auto date times enabled by default in your model. In the customer's case and in the case here, we've got a central date table. We don't need auto date time. 
So let's go back and we'll see how we can actually turn that off. So I said in the beginning, we can do this with just one item. Before I disable it, let's go back to, uh, actually, let me go to external tools. I'll hit deck studio here. We were looking at the VPAX file before, but if you want to generate that, we can go to advanced and you can actually see view metrics or you could export the metrics. Exporting metrics will actually generate that VPAX file. I'm going to go ahead and view metrics and we'll see the same thing that we saw in the VPAX file. Just look at the summary here, 1.7 gig, right? 1.7 gig in size because of all these local day tables. If I go now back into Power BI Desktop, let's go to File, we'll go to Options, Options again. You have two options here. You can do it from a global data load. This will do it for all files, the Time Intelligence checkbox, Auto Date Time for new files. Or under current file, we can come down to data load and just uncheck the auto date time for this specific file. So that's what I'm going to do here. We'll hit OK. All right, we are back. So now if we go back into DAC Studio, where we saw the 1.7 gig, let's look at view metrics again. 69 meg. What? 1.7 gig down to 69 meg. That's amazing, right? Because it got rid of all of those date timetables or the auto, the local date timetables, which was taking up all the space, just having those there. We've said before that auto date time definitely has a place with inside of Power BI. There are use cases where it's very useful for you, but even in a small model, there's a potential depending on what your dates look like that that could get really big. So you got to be mindful about that. So if you're seeing that your model is just massive in size, or maybe it's impacting your refresh, this is something to at least go look at. Look at the VertiPack analyzer, the VPAX file, the look at the view metrics inside of DAX Studio and see what that is. Look at the columns. And if you see a bunch of local date tables, that immediately tells you auto date times enabled. And if you see that those are consuming the majority of space, that's your pointer. All right, I want to hand this over to you. What do you think? Was your mind just the same way Patrick's and mine was? It was amazing to actually see and break that down and figure out what was taking up all that space. I want to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.